Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today's topic of discussion is on deadlock detection, continuation from the previous session. So in the previous session, I said just by observing a resource allocation graph, it is not possible for us to tell whether deadlock will occur or not in the system. If that resource allocation graph consists of what? Multiple instances of the resource. That's the reason one example I have taken here to show that there is more than one instance of a resource. And can we tell that whether deadlock occurs in the system just by observing the graph? Because we said if there is a cycle formed in the graph, then definitely there is a deadlock occurring in the system. Look here. Here also we can see a cycle formed here. Okay. Just check start from process P1. P1 is moving P2. Then once again back to P1. So there is a cycle formed here. And once a cycle is formed, definitely we are going to tell that deadlock is occurring. But here there are more than one instance. So for that reason only we should not just tell by observing. Rather, we can start uh, solving this particular example in a tabular form wherein we will show the different resources, how it is assigned to the processes and what requests the processes are making, which, which are the different uh, resources the processes are making. For that reason, we can do in this manner. Look here. Uh, I will just write here. Allocated is what assigned also you can say because I was using the word assigned only normally as allocated for which one for the processes P1, P2 and P3. Okay, these are the three resources. Is it visible to you all? Yes. So these are the three different which are the resources we will write here because the system is having three resources R1, R2 and R3. These are the three different kinds of resources. Then what you can do is you just make it a table in this manner and what are the requests that are made by the processes for different resources. For that also you can write down for which resource the process is making a request. So you better write R1, R2 and R3 and then you start carrying out for the numerical. In this example, by just looking at this arrow direction, we can easily find out which resource is assigned to which process, which process is making request for which resource. So that values you can fill. And before you start filling the values, also remember that in this entire system, there are three kinds of resources R1, R2 and R3. And R1 is having one single instance of the resource. R2 is having two instances of the resource. R3 has got once again one single. So these are what existing in the system initially existing in the system but later these instances or these resources got assigned to the different processes now assigned or allocated means the same so you start writing the values here so p1 is assigned with what p1 is assigned with one instance of r2 because there are two instances here one is assigned to p1 you write here p1 p1 is not assigned with any r1 or r3 so it will be 0 0 what about p2 P2 is assigned with one instance of R2 and also P2 is assigned with one instance of R1 and it is not assigned with R3. P3 is assigned with what? P3 is assigned with uh, one instance of R3 and not anything from R1 and R2. Fine. Next is what are the requests that each of these resources are making? P1 is making a request for R1. So we will write here 1. P1 is not making any request for R2 and R3. P2 is making a request for R3, fine, not making any request for R1 and R2. P3 is not making a request for any of the resources. So it is 0, 0, 0. Now what about available? Available is what you have to check in the system how many resources, how many instances of each of the resources are available. Initially it was 1 to 1, all those 1 to 1 got assigned to the different processes. So nothing is available. That is why you have to write here 0, 0, 0. Now we can see how to update the values for the available. I will write it here. It is clearly visible from this side. So we can say that available is what? 0, 0, 0 each of the resources. Now just by observing the graph, we came to know that yes, there is a cycle, there is a deadlock happening. But we have to be very much sure whether really deadlock occurs or not because just once seeing the cycle is not sufficient. The reason is if you have multiple instances of the resource, it is not possible for us to guarantee that deadlock will occur here or it is not possible for us to tell confidently that deadlock will occur in this system. So let us see whether deadlock occurs or not. Look here, we have to make the processes perform their job with whatever resources that 
they have got assigned and if at all they are making a request is it possible for the system to grant the request at present if you see p1 is requesting for r1 the system is not having p2 is requesting for r3 the system is not having so system cannot satisfy p1 cannot satisfy p2 <coughs> whether system can satisfy p3 look here p1 p3 is requesting for not requesting at all anything so p3 can definitely complete its job once completed p3 will also release this resource which it has taken earlier okay so once p3 release that resource it will get added into the system and the system is now presently with 001 so this system has got one resource of r3 available whether with this any other request can be satisfied check here p1 request is r1 not available in the system p2 request is r3 which is available in the system so system will grant that r3 to p2 and p2 will use that and also return this earlier assigned resources back to the system so now p2 will return which one because it has made use of the r3 one 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 now presently the system is having one one whether so this process got completed this process got completed p1 p1 is requesting for r1 yes the system has got now one instance of r1 so it can give it to p1 p1 will make use of this and also return this whichever was earlier assigned so p1 will return this p1 returning system will have 1 2 1 1 2 1 is what exactly initially these were the instances of the resources system is back here with 1 2 1 and also we could see that all the processes could complete their job so no process is in the deadlock state here so this is a deadlock free system and normally in the graph also you have to remember whenever there is a resource okay assigned you start from this dot only whenever it is making a request you can end this uh, arrow direction up till this square no need to bring it inside this box okay just stop it here it indicates that it is requesting for this resource but when it comes to this one assign you start from the dot just see one small change i'll do in the graph and then we will see whether deadlock will happen or not what i'll do is i'll make one more chain i will add this particular arrow direction here in the graph this edge here wherein it says that p3 is making a request for r2 once i do this then the request matrix for p3 will get changed what will be the value because it is requesting for r2 and here it will be 1 once this numbers come into picture you can see that initially nothing is available in the system p3 is demanding r2 it's not available p2 is demanding r3 not available p1 is demanding r1 not available so the system is not able to satisfy the request made from any of these processes so we say here there is a deadlock occurring so this same graph just one uh, addition to this one edge added to the graph will result in what deadlock so he, here we can say that yes the there is a deadlock occurring in the system so this is how you have to detect deadlock using the resource allocation graph so this was just a simple graph here let me take one more a uh, quite complicated graph in the next session to explain you about deadlock detection so hope this session is useful to you all if you find this session useful please like share and subscribe to my channel thank you bye bye take care